Cambridge prides itself on being a leader academically in terms of research, education. It has to be a social leader as well, tackling tough problems that are difficult for all institutions, like sexual harassment. And I think that the leadership of the university has to send the right signals and has to be committed to directly addressing these challenges. The community that we want at Cambridge is one that's inclusive and which is built on a foundation of mutual respect. So to achieve that, we need everybody in the community to be behind this exercise in breaking the silence and not tolerating any form of sexual harassment. Colleges as residential communities need to take the lead here, it seems to me, um, both in providing um, an atmosphere and a culture and a set of rules and regulations which leave every member of the community clear about what their responsibilities are but also to ensure that sexual harassment and misconduct are no longer taboo that we can address these issues clearly seriously to make to inspire confidence in those victims of sexual harassment and misconduct that they will be listened to when they come forward. I think if any student or a member of staff has been affected by sexual misconduct of any kind, it's vital that they have confidence to come forward to realise that what they say will be taken seriously and there are people in the university who are trained to provide support to them, to provide advice to them as to what they may wish to do next. If people are thinking about coming forward to talk about their experiences, at the counselling service we listen to people and we believe them and we are happy to talk through people's experiences in a safe space and then talk about the options that are available as well and our service is completely confidential so we encourage people to come forward and speak to us if they can. We know that sexual harassment is one of the most underreported of all offences. That's true at Cambridge, as it's true in most universities around the world. So if this campaign works, there will be more reporting. We can't be uncomfortable with that. That is a necessary consequence of bringing these cases to light. If ever there is an increase in reporting, that's always a very positive sign. It is not a sign that there is an increase in sexual harassment or assaults. It is indicative of an increase in victims and survivors' confidence in the systems and processes around them to protect them and provide them with support. Sexual misconduct is a difficult topic only because it's so embedded in our society, but difficult subjects are not unsolvable problems. And, and so I think a lot of people think that there's nothing that they can do because um, sexual misconduct happens on such a grand scale, but one of the best ways to challenge anything is to start small and to start in the spaces that you are um, to tackle it. Nothing we may find institutionally difficult to do is ever going to be harder than the experience of someone living with the consequences and trauma of sexual harassment. We know that it's not the experience itself that's important, whether it's a joke or a comment or something shared online, it's the impact it has on other people that's important. And we don't always know how other people have responded to something or how it's affected them. So it's important for us to be mindful that our intention doesn't always make a difference to how other people will experience what we say or what we do. And I think it's important for us to think about that. No matter how brilliant you are, and Cambridge Colleges are full of brilliant people, nobody has the right to act in such a way that the person who's on the receiving end of that act or comment or behaviour feels unsafe. It's important to tackle sexual harassment because it's the right thing to do. Beyond that, if we don't tackle sexual harassment, we're going to lose out. People won't be doing their best here, some people may leave. So those aspirations to be excellent will be undermined. One particular aspect of that that concerns me is the leaky pipeline. There are lots of reasons why women drop out along the way in their career. If anything of that is to do with sexual harassment, then we have to tackle it. 
If we don't address sexual harassment seriously, I think that we have a chance of losing some of the very most talented members of our community who will feel that they're not really part of the community because they don't feel safe. And so if we want to ensure that Cambridge is a home for the very best amongst us, then dealing with this issue directly and honestly is important. University should be one of the spaces where you feel like you can open yourself up to new experiences. And I, I think the one thing that a kind of culture that condones sexual misconduct does is shuts people down and makes them isolated and vulnerable. Um, and if we claim to care about people, if we came to claim to care about our community, I think one of the ways that we show that we care about our community is by tackling uh, misconduct and by making sure that everyone feels safe and supported and feels like they can get the justice that they need um, through whatever means that might be.